All right, so with Kirby installed, we can go ahead and set up our code base like I talked about at the end of the last video. I went ahead and CD'd him into this folder, the root folder of this project. If you list it out, it has just some other folders and some files to go along with it. Again, this, this CMS is in PHP and it's pretty, pretty easy to write, pretty easy to navigate. So uh, hopefully I won't stumble my way through this, but we will see. I'm going to open this. I'm using Sublime. I'm going to try to make things legible for you guys so it's not so hard to see. I run on a pretty large monitor, so I'm trying to do this two up view. If you guys have feedback on that, if you don't like it, for prefer like a one up and then me just toggle between them, let me know because I'm going to do it this way for now. Currently, let me explain this folder structure. We have an assets folder, which is where your CSS, fonts, images, um, and I guess my avatar now lives. Um, that's all served to the public uh, through the links, of course, on your HTML. Uh, the content is, is what gets generated when you do make stuff from the CMS itself. You wouldn't normally make this by hand. It kind of defeats the purpose, but if you need to, I'm sure you could. It would, I think, sync back to the CMS. So if you created a new folder, named it five and um, I don't know, portfolio or something, I don't know, something like that, it would show up here. So. Uh, there is an error page just because you need one of those. There is a home page. And if you look in the content inside here, zoom back in a little bit, uh, is, is essentially marked down in the end that gets rendered to HTML, uh, but it has this front matter on it that uh, is smart. And these bits here, these titles are actually the fields that end up in your CMS here. So if you see those match up, there's intro on this side, there's intro there, that content's there, and that's the same there. Uh, like I said, it used in the last video, it, this uses YAML as kind of this way to generate this content, or at least establish it. In doing that, you would look into the site folder and in blueprints and all that stuff is here. If you never worked with YAML before, it's a pretty simple language. It is space sensitive, so you want to indent properly. Um, so each each new thing is a tab, is the way I do it. And the actual vertical height doesn't matter too much, just as long as the indentation is is you know pairing up with the previous line. So here, these this is where these things get established. Like I said, if we wanted to change this to I don't know introductory Terry I can't spell and then refresh there it goes over there it's pretty so simple so pretty cool it's pretty easy to um, create these new fields which I really like it's there's no clunky UI to work with like advanced custom fields if you've been used with uh, that with WordPress or anything before. A lot of these files are name sensitive, so you have to be sure that some of these things match to get everything to work properly. So we'll get into that as we move on. Uh, but again, in the site, there's stuff for the accounts that gets generated. There's a config file. This one's pretty useful to optimize your development workflow. There's one thing I want to turn on is the, it's, it's config something and then true or debug, I think, if we go like this. See, again, here's where that license would come into play if you do go live and purchase this production version. So I think here is debug. And we don't want a string here, but actually true. So then if it errors, we should get uh, feedback, which it has a really good error UI. I was, I was pleasantly surprised, hopefully, I guess if I error out, you'll see it. So if you want to view the front end of the site, I didn't actually, well, I did in the last video, I showed you guys what it looked like, but that's as simple as it is right here. One thing I noticed is it doesn't really include forms, like a contact form. So you might have to use a third party or something like that, which is fine, but it's something else to think about. Uh, Cause I know we'll obviously want a contact form. 
Uh, controllers are these extra ways to, I don't know, basically build out functionality to return data back. Uh, think of it as a functions file in, inside of WordPress. So this one in particular, it's it's smart in rendering the um, the blog functionality. You can do per page, the articles, and it goes down basically this hierarchy of stuff. We won't be using the blog functionality here, so I'll probably end up deleting that. But if you decide you want to use it, it comes out of the box working pretty well, but there are extensions you can add as well. Most of the work we'll be doing is in the blueprints and templates files. These, these are the actual files you're probably used to seeing um, in terms of HTML content. So uh, the about page matches this one here. There's blocks of repeatable content and blocks of unique content. This one in particular is unique simply because it is going through a page and finding the certain team member, which in this case is cats, um, and then uh, outputting those in a, like a loop fashion, just using a basic for each loop in PHP. And if you notice up here, there's a snippet. Those are pretty useful too. If you, it's just the same as I'd say WordPress, the, the template parts kind of thing going on there, or content parts. Um, same thing. So you can include just blocks of code that way, but it's called snippets. Plugins we'll get into later. I do make use of a couple that I found. Uh, there aren't tons of plugins like you would find in WordPress, but it is stuff that's tasteful instead of just cluttered with ads and crap that you might be used to. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to get started, I do want to use SAS for this project, so that means installing uh, NPM, or I've been using, lately I've been using Yarn, which is a new NPM manager from, or node manager from uh, Facebook. Famously, in my last few videos, I make use of a snippets manager called Snippets Lab. I have it running here. Uh, but if you see, I have another video on setting up Gulp, in a WordPress install. This is pretty much the same thing. Almost exact, actually, I'd say. So we're gonna set this to, I actually need to just save it. So a gulp file, JS. That's gonna go in your root directory of your site. And, man, this is so big. Hopefully you guys can see that. If you followed along in that video, which if you look in the comments, I believe I linked a gist to this file. It's a very similar setup here. We're running a, a local server that will automatically refresh as we make changes to the CSS that we include here. There's a few changes we need to make based on the structure of this particular folder structure that comes with Kirby. Uh, but this is very close to what we already need to get going. I won't go into detail on this because again, I have another video on it. Maybe I'll link to that below. Um, if not, you can find it on my YouTube channel or on my blog. Not only do you have to in include this file, but you need to install those packages to get that working in this specific project. Uh, I have a snippet here that I use to s I'll use it to save time here, but it's the same uh, as NPM if you're used to that. And I'm going to paste that in. Cursor is kind of weird. So essentially, Yarn will go out and fetch these packages. The main one we want to use is Gulp, and then Gulp tailor fits all these other ones to do all these other things behind the scenes, which is cool. Uh, if you're not into the command line thing, that's perfectly fine. There are tools for that. There's one called Prepros or Pros or something that's for Windows and Mac. And my favorite one from the past was CodeKit, if you check that out. So let's go ahead and run these. Okay, so I found the MP, or, um, Yarn is quite fast in terms of installing that stuff. So if you haven't switched or aren't thinking about it, maybe consider it that done we now have those packages available to us but we need to go ahead and modify this a bit to work with our site 
here this is going to serve from our ramp install and i need to add endless since that's what we called this folder and uh, we need to create a folder called sas in our assets directory there so here it's referencing that assets sas and everything in underneath that i'll go ahead and create what I typically do in my projects is a underscore partials file. I don't know why I can't see it in that frame, but. And then one more file in that, um, it's called base. And then finally one that's called style.scss in the actual root folder of the SAS folder. Uh, and this one will import partials and base just to get things going. I'm going to do this a lot more with a lot more style sheets. Uh, the benefits to doing it this way is to modularize your CSS, which is more efficient and you can make things cascade the way you like. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to do a lot more about SAS because I really love writing it as opposed to traditional CSS. Uh, so I will think about doing that. Uh, for now, let's um, just put a, a body tag and just save that for now. We'll come back. Okay, so we got our site up. We have this folder created. Now one thing we need to pay attention to is where this outputs. So much like this folder structure, we wanna actually output it to the CSS here in the assets folder. So this needs to be assets, CSS, and I'll just do that. Or actually it needs to be style that CSS. Yeah. It would, it would maintain, no, let's just, let's just do that. It'll maintain the, the name of our root SAS file there. So it'll be style.css when it hits this folder. Once gulp runs, of course. And finally, I think that's about it. Let me open this wider so you can see it. I use a source maps um, plugin to basically see my SAS files directly as opposed to just the CSS when it's optimized. Um, we do image minification, which we'll get into once I uh, subtract or select photos out of our design file. Speaking of, I will create an originals folder there. That's where we'll put all of our basically unoptimized files. Once they're in there, we can run gulp and it will automatically optimize those. So that's pretty nice. I think that's it. So at this point, we should be able to run gulp and see if this works on the 3000 server it should boot up on yeah P cool success okay so the benefit to doing this is if I were to go write some whatever CSS red well we have to actually modify some files real quick if you go into snippets we need to include our actual style sheet so um, site template or um, snippets header and instead of index we want style and boom so we lost all the nice styles they had but we got our site up there and to prove it's working save it automatically refreshes you can see it notifying us so we have that installed and i think we'll stop there for now and continue on in the next video extracting the assets out of our design file and getting things ready to go